Got some, I got some rock music going for you. I didn't have much else queued up. Oh. Oh, he's throwing a new element into this dance. He's actually doing medical stuff. Wow. Well, where's the dance? Wait a minute. Oh, there it is, baby. Get you a man that can do both. Oh, was that a new? Yo. <laughs> Hold on there, killer. Was that a new move? Yeah, it's shake a leg. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen you. It's usually in and out. I don't think I've ever seen you throw the, the thigh side to side. Is that something you're adding for the season here? Or? Yeah, it's oh, kind of how I say hello now. All right. Well, hello to you too, thigh, thigh Doc. It's good to have you on. We were see talking this? a little. Yeah, I do see that. Is that a custom made or are you uh, are you selling those? What's the story there? Yeah, you could DM me if you want one, but uh, yeah, it's custom. Okay. Well, I don't want you to get hit with a uh, cease and desist. I got to get my hands on one of those before oh, you get yeah, the order. That's right. That's right. Well, I got All a right. couple. Uh, got a couple in the closet. All right. All right. Well, I'll have to shoot you the address afterwards. So we were talking earlier about OBJ, and I told the folks here, um, you know, joining tonight. I said. It's not a matter of if you want him to come or if he will come. It's just a matter of we're being told right now on social media to look out for it because we're seeing Andre Reed, Von Miller, and OBJ himself constantly commenting on the fact that there's potential to go to Buffalo. And if you think about him joining Thigh Doc, it would be the biggest question would be okay, if he's coming to Buffalo, when will he be able to play and how healthy will he be? You wanted to talk to me tonight about the injury he suffered in the Super Bowl and what that would mean for him coming back this coming season. Yeah, so he had a, he had a late February ACL reconstruction. It's the same knee he had done previously. Um, so that's two ACLs, same knee, less than two years. Um, you know, usually what do they say? Like nine months to come back, you know, nine to ten and a half. Yeah. So that kind of that kind of leaves him – uh, you know, that's like end of December. Um, so I don't think the bills would be interested in picking him up at this point. Right. But this is someone who's, when they get healthy, if he wants to take a cheap contract prorated, so they're not investing a lot of money and then bring them on for a couple of weeks before the playoffs. And then there we go. Um, that's how I see this one shaking out. If that's what they're going to do. Now, if it were up to you, I mean, not just based on, injury so to speak but when you look at what obj was able to do for the rams last year in a short stint if he does come back at around that timetable that you're speaking on is it worth it for buffalo to bring him in not only because of the health but because you have a loaded wide receiver room already and by that time i mean you're you're looking towards the playoffs yeah you know it's uh it's complicated so it's always good to have more talent in the locker room yeah it could could rub people the wrong way, but it's also an insurance policy. So, you know, if Gabe or Diggs goes down, I mean, you're kind of missing an outside receiver there. Right. And, you know, are you going to expect Shakir to step up and win a Super Bowl with? I don't know if you want to do that in his rookie year. So, um, you know, Crowder is definitely injury prone. I think we could easily slap that label on him. And he's a slot guy. Uh, Shakir's a rookie coming up. And if, you know, if Gabe or Diggs goes down, it's going to be a huge hit to the offense. So a, I don't see – it's not a bad thing to bring yeah, him in, especially sure. if he's he's more mature at this point. He's, he's looking for the ring. He's going to come in with a good attitude. He's not, like, knocking over the kick net and, uh, you know, causing a ruckus. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm sure, sure – looks and Von Miller looks like he's a lot more comfortable with the team. No kidding. It looked a, it looked a little, oh, God, this is Von Miller. Like, the guys were – it seemed like the guys were a little shy around him, and, and he was, like, very, like – proper when he came in but it looks yeah. like he's kind of he's you know he's took his shell off and and he's one of the guys already so if uh finds one of the guys by then he's got he's vouching for obj they got his respect i i don't i see this this could work more of a story I, I think you make a really good point there about von i'm actually going to touch on that in a little bit but you go from what you were talking about, a little bit of seriousness there. I think that comes with changing locker rooms. And then you had people trying to make a story out of the fact that he said he wanted to go to Dallas. I thought that was nothing, but like, like everything I was speaking on earlier with the Cole Beasley thing and whatever, it's just, it's always something, especially online. But now you got him taking pictures with the babies, him and Josh Allen and yeah. Diggs, and now you got him going after OBJ. I love it. Uh, PC or PVC fam four coming in thigh doc wrong button. Give him a smoke up here. Any insight to Odell actually coming in and would you want it? I would. So we just touched on that a little bit. But yeah. you're looking at that injury in particular. Now, I guess the better question would be, Thigh Doc, if you do bring him in, would you bring him in 
for the end of the season run into the playoffs like the Rams did? Or would you consider keeping him around? Is an injury like that something you worry about long term, especially at the wide receiver position? Yeah, you know, it definitely took a hit to his long- longevity. Uh, two ACLs. I mean, that's that's a lot of work yeah. done on the knee. Um, but I'm glad you asked that because there were some reports that he had some issues with the first ACL. He was mm-hmm. a little slow coming back with it. And the reports out of Cleveland, and you never know if it's a smear campaign, but he didn't go to his team doctor. He went to the James Andrews down in uh, Alabama. Yeah. And, the, and Cleveland said it was a, a poor surgery because of the surgeon. So one would say, well, well, what the hell happened? Because a lot of stuff can happen with rehab. Sure. It's not it's not as simple as it's people have gotten so good at surgery and rehab, it just looks good most of the time. Right. But five percent of the time, this is what I think. This is not documented. Five percent of the time you can get a cyclops lesion. And what happens is, and I have a model here. So this oh, is the, the knee. Model now we're talking. Yeah. So this is a right knee. Mm-hmm. Kind of looking at you. So we're going to turn it sideways. You open it up. All right. Uh, let's see here. Can you see inside the knee, fellas? It yeah, kind so of looks like it now, guy, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. I see it. Yeah. So this, this ligament right here is the ACL. If you look deep in the knee, it inserts back in here. And then it inserts into the shin in the front. Got it? Mm-hmm. So when you rupture that, they kind of like clean this all out. And then they, they clean up where it attaches. And then they got to put new tunnels in there. So they're going to drill up through the femur and down through the tibia. And once in a while, the hole isn't where it's supposed to be. So it's a little too anterior and that makes it catch. Yeah. Like the, like the ACL catches when the knee's extending. So it screws up extension, which is like the most important thing to get back. That'll affect your quad activity. And then you can start getting scar tissue around uh, the, the new graft. They call that a cyclops lesion. Again, even the best surgeons, it can happen 5% of the time. When they said it was the surgeon's fault, I'm pretty confident he had a cyclops lesion. Now, Mm. they come in all different shapes and sizes. Sometimes Mm. you get a little fibroid, and it just, like, bothers the knee. But other times you could get a big-ass one, and those people, the knee blows up, and and they they have to have another surgery. I think he had a little one. It, the, maybe the surgery was off a little bit, but it was affecting him, made him come back slow, and it affected his rehab. So then when he came back, uh, you know, yada, 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 you can make a case that it, it wasn't ever 100%, and then he had another non-contact ACL in the same knee. Now he gets it done again. They get to redrill the holes and put him in the right spot. So now the reconstruction's better than it was before. However, it's still a second surgery right. on the same knee. So yeah. And it's kind of a double-edged sword. In one way, it helps because now this, you know, the graft's in there better, and you can rehab better. But it's a, it's a second ACL. You know what I mean? Yeah. Basically, what they do is they take the same knee's patella. They'll they'll trim out a little bit of the middle here. They'll take a clip of the patella, a little bit of your tibial tuberosity in the middle of your patella, and then sew it back up. And they'll use that as the graft. But you can't do that the second time. So the second time, they're either going to take it from his hamstring. Or they're going to take that patella from the other knee. It's going to affect the other knee because now you're taking the the patella tendon out of the other one. Um, And the hamstrings, to be honest, they they loosen up. But they usually loosen up in like 10 years. So it wouldn't affect him now. But, you know, say like, hey, this is OBJ. This is a Hall of Famer. This is someone who's going to play till he's 36, 37, 38. Now you're looking at OBJ, who's going to kind of hang it up at like 33, 34. Wow. Okay. So getting OBJ in house here is not like, oh, shit, we got him. Let's sign him up to a, a six year deal because he's he's a legend. Now, I would see this as like a one and done issue. He's friends with Vaughn. He's chasing rings. He knows his career has been shortened. Yeah. And um, at the end of the day, he's a premier receiver. He'll be good enough come January. And if he, you know, he gets in house, he gets up to speed, a guy goes down or just working him into the, to the, you know, the depth chart uh, can do wonders in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, I have to imagine like last year, the Rams, Robert Woods goes down. They were still doing fine without him, but not nearly as well when they do have him on the field. That to me is why they go out and get OBJ. I'm not against it no matter what. Right. But you have to Ooh, think at point in the year, if someone goes down, that's why you do it. Sorry to cut you off, but the Rams, if you remember, they actually picked up OBJ, and then the same week 
literally a few days later, Woods went down in practice. You know what? You're so right. Actually, I, think I do yeah. often think that it was after. I, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So it helped them because mm. they had they had the insurance policy yeah. on the receiving core, but they actually didn't pick them up because Woods went down. So it, it helped. I mean, that's yeah. that's how it goes. You're well. Then you're to your point, though, right? Support. You have that insurance without having to go find it again. You have it right there. Yeah. So I guess that does it, it does make sense. But I do I do wonder with the way the wide receiver core is now. If that is in the it, it would be to me, it doesn't seem like the Brandon Bean move, but we've seen a lot of moves this offseason that necessarily weren't yeah. the style in which Brandon Bean is used to showing us. But I've been all about that. So 